Hi everyone, uh, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Uh, a very warm welcome from us in the uh, Faculty of Arts, Design and Humanities today. Um, we're going to be talking through in this live stream lots of uh, information uh, and top tips uh, for newcomers. Um, we're also going to be answering some of your questions at the end, so please keep them coming in the comments. Um, by all means, feel free to kind of uh, say hi, tell us who you are, what you're going to be studying with us so we can give a few shout outs. Um, and yeah, we're just looking forward to kind of answering any uh, concerns and uh, questions that you may have um, today. So my name is Marie. Um, I work in DMU's uh, social media and news team, uh, and I'm your host today. Uh, but thankfully, I've got a very knowledgeable panel with me, and we're just going to go around uh, quickly for some uh, very brief introductions. Um, Paul, uh, would you like to introduce yourself first, please? Lovely, thank you. Afternoon, everyone. It's really great that you're here joining us. My name is Paul. I'm Associate Professor of Student Experience for the faculty. So I work on faculty-wide projects that are related to your student experience. I also teach on BA Fashion Design, BA Fashion Communication and Styling, and MA Fashion and Textiles. So if you're on any of those courses, I might be seeing you soon. Fantastic. Thank you, Paul. And over to Joyce next. Hi, my name's Joyce Frank. I'm the Deputy Administration Manager. I work in the um, student administration office alongside Joe and Diani. Um, I mainly focus on postgraduate and um, our associate college students. So we look after all of the administration that we need to do that sits behind um, you studying at De Montfort University. Pretty meaty role there. Thank you, Joyce. Uh, and how about you, Joe? Hi, uh, nice to meet everybody today. My name's Joe Burt and I'm the administration manager. So I manage the team that looks after all administrative aspects of your time with us. That's everything from registration right through assessment boards and graduation. So great you've all joined us today. Thank you, Joe. And last but not least, Diani. Hi, uh, I'm Diana Gatenby Davis. Uh, I'm the faculty's academic support officer um, and I manage the Student Advice Centre um, and the team within the Student Advice Centre. So uh, if you have any queries about anything to do with your studies, then you can come to us and we'll provide you with advice and guidance. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, it's just so lovely uh, to see so many of you uh, in the comments saying hi and telling us what you're studying. Um, we're just as excited uh, as you are to kind of welcome you to the faculty. So yeah, thank you so much for all your comments so far. Um, as I said, we'll be answering some questions um, at the end of the session. Uh, but first of all, I'm going to hand over to Paul, uh, who's going to talk through some um, important information um, for you as a newcomer to the faculty. Super, thank you. OK, so to start off the stream, I have some key information for you, just so you've got a little bit more background. You'll know a little bit about what to expect should only take about 10 minutes and hopefully there will be some pictures appearing as I'm talking, which will help break up your view into some nicer pictures. <laughs> so let's get going. First of all, absolutely importantly, welcome to the Faculty of Arts, Design and Humanities. We're really delighted that you're joining us in this live stream and that you're joining us on campus and within the faculty as part of your study. So it may be that you've had the opportunity to already visit us face to face, or maybe you've made a virtual visit online. And I just want to give you a little bit more of an introduction to the faculty and also let you know about some of the adjustments that we have in place in light of the current pandemic. I'll start by explaining the faculty more generally. So our different schools, where to find us on campus, who's who, and then go on to talk about the steps we've taken to support your learning experience this year. I hope that this will make you feel a little bit more familiar with DMU and start to answer some of those general questions and queries you may have. So in our faculty, Arts, Design and Humanities, we want to give our students the very best experience possible. 
And our ambition is to provide you with the tools you need to achieve your aspirations, whether that's as a future designer, artist, writer, researcher or performer, etc. Art and design has been taught at DMU for over 150 years, and we are very proud of our heritage as it's the foundation of who we are today. We are a faculty of many subject disciplines, each with their own identity. And the Faculty of Art, Design and Humanities is divided into three schools. So let's start off by looking at those schools, each of which has a head of school and houses a group of programmes or subject areas. So starting off, the first school is the School of Art, Design and Architecture. As you would expect, our School of Art, Design and Architecture is the home of visual arts, architecture and design programmes such as product design, interior design, design crafts, etc. Then the next school is the School of Fashion and Textiles. This is the home of our fashion and textiles programmes, whether they be design led, technical or more business routes. And the third school is the School of Humanities and Performing Arts. This is the home of our English, creative writing and history programmes, as well as our dance, drama and performing arts provision. So as well as being the home of programmes, the schools, each school also have their own subject related research activities and commercial links to ensure that our curriculum remains contemporary and relevant. We love to work with external parties and industry. In many of our programmes, we have live projects, industry briefs and opportunities to enter competitions, giving students opportunity to work on real life challenges but also help to promote students' creative work and talents to a much wider audience. Some of these are very subject specific and are linked to specific partners or programmes, but others are on a national or even international level with com competition being across multiple groups. Undergraduate students can also take a year long placement to gain valuable external experience to support your study and we have our own dedicated placement team and placement tutor within the faculty to support you throughout that journey. We have external speakers who add specialist content and share practice both within programs and in different shared events taking place throughout the year. Within the faculty, we're known for our showcasing activities which promote our students graduating outcomes, both internally and externally. For example, internally, we have an annual degree show which showcases design, visual arts, fashion and textiles, architecture, etc. And then the next image you're going to see there it is, <laughs> is one of our graduate footwear students, Dimitri, who was the YKK Accessories Award winner and also the Cordwainers Footwear Student of the Year second place at Graduate Fashion Week. His work at Graduate Fashion Week and beyond secured him a placement with the luxury fashion house Givenchy. And through these opportunities, and our degree show, which took place in June this year, we were able to provide a face-to-face -face exhibition, but also online show reels of student work. We also have performance showcasing with a university dance festival and have yearly performances at The Curve, which is an award-winning theater in Leicester, with whom we have a partnership. Again, due to restrictions in April, just gone, we took our showcasing online and our performing art students who work, who had been working closely with the internationally acclaimed physical theatre company Gecko, 
they created a groundbreaking performance celebrating being together while staying apart, which premiered on YouTube to much acclaim. We're also part of lots of external national showcasing events such as Graduate Fashion Week, the Graduate Fashion Foundation, and new designers, etc. So let's look at some of the practicalities now. Where is the faculty on campus and what are the buildings that you'll be looking out for? So the faculty is mainly housed in three buildings on the city centre campus. So the next picture you're about to see. Yes, that's the one. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> this is the award winning VJ Patel building which brings all of our art and design courses together, offering inspiring, flexible spaces, studios and facilities which invite creativity. If you have seen it firsthand, then you'll know it's very open in design, which means you can see into many of the workshops and see the creative process in action. Then our next building, the PACE building is recognised as a centre for excellence in performance arts by the Higher Education Funding Council for England. PACE, alongside other spaces, um, offer studios, rehearsal rooms and performance spaces for our performing arts subjects. And then our third building is the Cleffen building which is the home for our humanities subjects and it's also where you'll find our performing arts staff offices. I'm in the Cleffin building right now. So both the Cleffin building and the VJ Patel building have their own student advice centres. The faculty student advice centres can provide you with information and advice about a whole variety of different matters in order to help guide and support you through your studies and help you to make the most of your time here at DMU. This could be anything from student identification card queries, how to get in touch with your personal tutor or just settling in queries. Students can visit the advice centre if they have an immediate query and you're on site, or you can email them and they're in, through their inbox and someone in the team will come back to you. So our email for the student advice centres there, you can see it on the screen is adhadvice at dmu.ac.uk. It's a good email to learn, top tip. Okay, so once you're on your programme, you'll have access to the DMU handbook and also your programme handbook. These contain lots of useful and important information about your programme, about the faculty and the university facilities and processes. These provide really useful reference resources which you can go back and revisit, look into throughout your study with us. I know it might not be the first thing you want to read, but my other top tip would be do read those handbooks and know where they are because they will guide you through everything that the university and your programme is. There's also a number of key individuals you'll meet once you start your programmes next week. So exciting. So you'll meet your programme leader, who is responsible for the design and delivery of your programme of study, your personal tutor, who is often a member of the subject team, and your personal tutor can support you with any general academic matters or personal concerns relating to life at DMU. Module leaders, so your programme each year is made up of chunks of study which are called modules and each module has a module leader who's responsible for the module management, delivery and assessment. And then of course the wider programme team who collabor collaboratively deliver your programme of study. To prepare you for this year a number of additional resources have been put in place to help prepare all students 
for blended learning, understanding how university life will work this year, and all of our COVID health and safety processes. So we'll take a look at some, not all, save you something to find next week. So some of those key resources. Let's start with your DMU future, a site that you may have already looked at. Here you'll find all of the advice and support on how your, universe, how your university life will work this year. We have frequently asked questions section and pages on teaching, learning, life in Leicester, sport, specific information for international students and more. It's regularly updated in line with new information, so a great source of reference, particularly the frequently asked questions section. You can guarantee if you have that question, lots of other people have it too, and you'll find the answers there. Another resource is your, is your DMU safety. And there's the web address on the page. This brings together all of DMU's COVID-19 related health and safety information and guidelines into a single microsite. So the health and safety of our students and staff is of, is of paramount importance to us. And this site provides the guidance for you to enjoy your campus in a safe and secure way. It includes guidance on principles to follow, details, measure, the measures that the university has put in place and how to make the campus secure and as safe as it can be. So at the moment, hopefully you are all engaged in what we call the pre-induction process. Part of this pre-arrival online pack of information includes the e-self-assessment exercise. So a quick question for you to start typing an answer to if you can. Are you aware of the E self assessment exercise and has anybody completed it yet? This is a really valuable set of questions to help you to identify right at the beginning of your course the levels of confidence in key skill areas and also to be able to make statements about what you see as your development ambitions. It's a great document to look through with your personal tutor. So please do complete the exercise and keep a copy of the report which it emails to you afterwards because that's something you can look through with your tutor. And then another resource is DMU Basecamp. So this is a new online non-credit bearing module to give you vital information about being a student at DMU, about support and networking, digital skills development, and lots of great things to know about. You can access DMU Basecamp throughout your time with us via the virtual learning environment. We use a platform called Blackboard for that. So when you hear people talking about Blackboard, we're talking about the virtual learning environment. Please do look out for it and make this location one of your regular reference points once you are able to access Blackboard. Within the faculty, we have reviewed our programmes to identify what needs to be taught face to face and what could still be supported remotely to support, le to support the learning outcomes of our programmes. This has created a blended learning approach for our programmes, which is a mixture of face-to-face -face and online content, some of which will be delivered live and some pre-recorded for you to access in your own time and to go back and be able to review the content. The pattern of this blended approach depends on your programme, so you'll need to ensure that you follow your timetable carefully and note any additional self-study expectations between timetabled activities. Our plan for teaching and learning provision for 2021 has been created to future-proof the experience. 
we are indeed maximizing face-to-face -face and on-campus activities where possible, but crucially, we plan to avoid sudden disruption for students should national COVID-19 restrictions have to be reintroduced. All lectures, for example, will be delivered online. Lectures typically impart information, so are well suited to this approach. Whereas more interactive activities, such as group discussions in seminars, work well both face-to-face -face and online. Our practical activities are often best taught face-to-face, -face, so we have looked at how we can most effectively use workshops and studios to support students' practical learning in specialist spaces. In all cases, the safety and well-being of our students and staff is paramount. And this has been reflected in the programme planning and timetabling. We've also reviewed assessments to ensure that these can be conducted effectively. We've had the benefit of the successful experience of our current and graduating students who submitted assessments remotely at the end of the academic term. For example, exam exams were adjusted so that they could be delivered and submitted online. We are using MS Teams, Microsoft Teams, to deliver teaching activities when they will be online. And we've been using this platform across DMU for some time now, so the staff are familiar and confident to deliver via both MS Teams and face-to-face. -face. We use email and Blackboard, our virtual learning environment, to share information and communicate with individuals and groups and to post learning materials and resources. More information about Blackboard is available within your induction week activities next week. We will focus our face-to-face -face teaching in small environments, such as seminars and workshops, whilst keeping large teaching sessions online through a mix of live and pre-recorded lectures to balance your experience and your safety. I hope that this has helped to give you a little bit more of an insight into the faculty, into the schools, our buildings, and how we've adapted to support your student experience this year. We're really looking forward to welcoming you to the faculty, particularly on person and in campus, and then getting you settled into your programmes of study. We're very excited to see what you will be getting up to and what you produce. I hope you're just as excited. Thank you. Thank you, Paul, for that really comprehensive roundup. Um, we had a few questions um, about the e self assessment, um, and it's something that you should receive in your pre induction packs. So make sure you have a look at those uh, so you can spot it and complete it. As Paul said, it's a really useful tool going forwards for you guys. Um, also, we're getting loads and loads of lovely comments of people introducing themselves. Of course, no <laughs> one. Um, and a lot of you are kind of asking whether there's specific uh, groups uh, that you can chat to like-minded students and so on. Um, a good place to start, if you haven't kind of found that group online yet, is our dedicated um, New to DMU 2021 Facebook page. Um, there's more than 3,600 uh, students on there already. Um, and if you kind of drop a message, uh, we'll, we'll put it in the comments. So we'll send the direct link in the comments. Uh, you can join us there. Um, and yeah, you can kind of chat to people, uh, find people who are in the same accommodation as you, on the same course as you, um, or just have the same interests as you. And often I know you'll probably take your chats off Facebook and form other groups, but it's a really good um, starting point if, uh, yeah, if you need it. So uh, there you go. Um, I'm going to hand over to Jo now, uh, who's uh, going to chat to us a little bit um, about her area of expertise. Thank you, Marie. So I've seen a few questions in the chat regarding registration. So I'll just tell you a little bit more about registration. You should have all received an email with an invite to register online. We call this pre-registration online. You needed to have first of all set up your own password and then click on the link to pre-register online. 
If you haven't done that already, please do so. Uh, you should have already received as well a programme specific induction schedule and this will have been emailed to you. This will have been emailed to you using the same email address that you used when you applied to your course. If you haven't received an induction schedule or if you haven't been invited to pre-register online, please email the Student Advice Centre. So I think the email address was up there a little while ago. It's adhadvice at dmu ac.uk. There we go. Thank you. So I know the vast majority of you have already registered, pre-registered online, which is fantastic. Along with your induction schedule, which is program specific, some of you may have also received a summer project or a reading list or an equipment list. Not all programs, that's just specific to some programs. So don't worry if you haven't received that. Um, those of you who pre-registered online before the 13th of September will have received another email asking you to confirm that you're joining us. All you simply need to do is click on the link and that sends you to a Microsoft form for you to just fill in your details. And I know from looking at the data that the vast majority of you, of you have done that already as well. So thank you. If you haven't yet clicked on that link, please do so. That's just for students who pre-registered pre online before the 13th of September. <clears throat> if you pre-registered online after the 13th of September, you won't have been asked to do that. For international students, I don't know whether there's any international students in this chat, but there's a couple of extra things that you need to do as part of your registration. As well as pre-registering online, international students need to pay 50% of the fees and then have a virtual appointment. So those are really important steps that international students need to do before you have a final registration status. Now, the faculty office are busy at the moment finalising the registration of students. Once you have pre-registered online, completed the additional steps for international students, we will email you. When we email you, we'll confirm that you're a final registered student and we'll send you an IT guide. Now, some of you may have received that already, but we'll be continuing to do this right up until the end of Sunday. So don't worry if you haven't heard from us. All students by the end of Sunday will receive an email from us saying that your registration is complete and sending you an IT guide. Please have a look at that IT guide. It's really important. It will tell you how to access MyDMU. Now, MyDMU is really important. You access MyDMU to see your timetable, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. MyDMU, that's a student portal where you'll see your results in the future and your timetable. It will also give you access to Blackboard and Blackboard is the uh, virtual learning environment where your program leaders and module leaders will post information about your program and about all your modules. So Blackboard and MyDMU are both really important resources for you. That IT guide will also explain about your email address. So you'll receive a DMU email address as well. So please look out for that email. You'll receive an email, could have received it already, or it will be any time between now and Sunday. Please don't worry if you haven't received it already. And that's when you'll get access to all our systems. So it could be any time between now and Sunday. If you're struggling to pre-register online, I did see a couple of comments in the chat a little bit earlier. We've got a uh, email address that you can contact. I don't know whether we can put it up there. It's called registration queries. There we go. Registration queries at dmu.ac.uk. So if you're having trouble pre-registering online, please contact um, that email address and the staff there that we're able to get back to you fairly quickly. Okay. Um, moving on to timetables. So any student who pre-registers by the end of uh, this Sunday should receive their timetable via MyDMU on Thursday the 30th of September. That's undergraduate students. If you're a postgraduate student, you'll receive your timetable via MyDMU on Sunday the 3rd of October. 
that date is also the same if you're a new undergraduate and you're starting in the second year or the third year as a direct entrant. That's Sunday, the 3rd of October. We, of course, needed to have been completely registered, final registered before then in order to see your timetable. ID cards, I haven't seen any questions about that, but we normally get lots of questions at the Student Advice Centre, as Diani knows. So ID cards will be posted to your term time address. So it's really important that we have an accurate term time address for you. If your term time address has been changed, please contact ADH Advice, that's the Student Advice Centre, and let us know your correct term time address. The ID cards, we've just started sending them out yesterday. Obviously, there's a lot for the university to send out because we've got hundreds of new students joining us. So you will receive your ID card anytime between now and the 15th of October. But that does depend on when you pre-registered and when your registration was finalised. So you won't receive your ID card until after your registration is finalised. Uh, there was, I think, one or two questions about change of programmes that I spotted there as well. So if you're not fully registered yet, please contact admissions regarding your change of programme. So that's admissions at dmu.ac.uk. Please contact admissions if you'd like to change programme. If you're already fully registered and you've received an email from us saying you're fully registered with the IT guide, then please contact advice at dmu.uk. That's the SAC Student Advice Centre email address if you'd like to change programme. Um, you do have two weeks to change program until the end of the first two weeks of teaching, but there is paperwork that you need to fill out and an approval process from our program leaders for that. I think that's it from me with regards to registration. I think Diani was going to go on and talk to you a little bit about the Student Advice Centre. Right. Thank you very much, Jo. Yep. Over to Diani. Uh, yeah, so I think uh, Paul covered the Student Advice Centre quite nicely, really. Um, but uh, yeah, we're the Student Advice Centre. We're based in both uh, BJ Patel and the Cleffern building. Um, we are open Mondays to Thursdays from 9am until 4.30pm. And then on a Friday, we're open 9am until 4pm. You can come to us face to face or you can contact us by email. Um, on the ADH advice at dmu.ac.uk, which I'm sure that you uh, have hopefully written down by now. If you have any kind of queries, it, honestly, it doesn't matter what it is. No questions, a stupid question. Uh, you're probably not the only one who has that question. So please do get in touch with us. Um, you know, if there's any point during your studies where you feel like you might need a bit of additional support, again, please don't hesitate to get in touch um, because, you know, we can provide you with advice and guidance and we can hopefully, hopefully support you uh, through your studies. Um, so, yeah, I think I think that pretty much covers it, uh, really. We're just the one stop shop for any questions that you have. Um, but yeah. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that we've kind of, you know, answered lots and lots of questions um, as we've gone along and maybe things that people didn't think they needed to know. Um, but but now, you know, have uh, have all of that kind of information in their back pocket. Um, you know, we're still here for a little while longer. So please send in uh, any questions that you have uh, so we can answer them for you and, uh, you know, kind of um, put I don't know, put any worries that you have uh, to bed. Oh, Paul, sorry, yes, please come in. <laughs> there were just a few questions that I started to pick up on that I thought Perfect. better to answer now because they link into what we were just saying. Yeah. Um, Joe, Joyce and Diane, I'm going to need your help with some of these. Um, I can't log into my DMU, what should I do?
you'll need to have a finalised registration status in, in order to log on to any student systems from my DMU to Blackboard to using your DMU email. So please wait until you receive the email from us confirming that you're fully registered. With that fully registered email, you'll receive an IT guide which will explain how to log on. If you've received that and you still have any problems logging on, then follow the advice that's in the IT leaflet that we've sent you or contact ADH Advice, the Student Advice Centre. Super. Thank you. I just noticed a question from Megan, how can I change courses within the same department? It, it doesn't matter if it's within the same department or a different one. If you are fully registered, then contact ADH Advice at DMU. If you're not fully registered yet, then you can do it through admissions at dmu.ac.uk. I won't bore you with why there's two different directions. But once you're fully registered, you are, as it says, fully registered. So we have different processes for that. Um, there was another question. Where do you get the discount letter of council tax from, please? Um, you should be, once again, you're final registered there. You'll go on to My DMU and you will see via My DMU, you can um, produce from My DMU, you can get student status letters, you can get a council tax letter as well. So that again is once you're final registered, access My DMU. Brilliant, thank you. And I just noted down what, um, a couple of, um, one very personal question and one general question. So the personal one was, which school is sports management within it's within humanities and performing arts and then I a couple of questions relating to what equipment will i need according to particular courses and i think all of those what will i need where will i be who will i be all those kind of questions will be answered for you during your induction which starts next week so do come along to those inductions, meet all the key people. The staff will talk you through what you'll be studying. If you do need particular materials, we also have a materials shop on site in the VJ Patel building, ground floor. So you don't have to go running around for everything. It has really fascinating pots of miniature people for architecture models. <laughs> Um, so I think all of those kind of what will I be doing, who, what will I need, that's what your induction sessions will do. And just while I'm talking about that, remember next week is induction week. It's not your course teaching starting. So next week is to ease you in in a relaxed way. You don't need to be stressed about it. You don't need to feel you're being tested. Nobody is expecting anything in particular of you. It's a chance to meet people and start to feel familiar and more confident with the surroundings, the atmosphere. So please do come to induction. Please don't feel nervous about it. I think the staff are feeling just as nervous as well because they haven't had lots of people in their studios for an equally long time. Thanks, Marie, for letting me jump in with those that I was just noticing. No, thank you. It's it's really handy. There's lots and lots. So, yeah, if anybody spots anything uh, that they, they think is well worth uh, answering uh, on here, please let me know. Um, uh Joyce did you want did you uh, want to jump in uh, with a, a reminder <laughs> yeah can I just remind if we've got any postgraduate students on the call if your course does have choice you do need to let us have know your choice if you haven't already so you would have received an email from the admin team um you would have should have received your uh, module study guide on where your course course has choice 
uh, we, we would have been asked for you to send us your choices in. So if you haven't already done that, if you could um, just answer the email that you received. If you if you haven't received the induction, the module choice guide, if you email uh, Student Advice Centre, we can make sure we get one sent out to you. But that would just be for the courses that have choice. Brilliant. Thank you. That's really, really helpful. And um, there was a question uh, that I spotted. Uh, I'm trying to find it now. Um, but about um, if you're um, a distance learning student, would you still have access to um, the facilities on, on campus? Yeah, that, that one's maybe quite specific to the course. I think that's another good question to talk through with your program team during induction week. I mean, you are a student, you still have access to the university facilities, but exactly what, where, what they might include. I'm, I'm just thinking of the distance learning courses and that might, you might be meaning some particular things. So I think that's a good question to have a talk through with your team next week during induction. Just notice there's lots of questions about um, induction schedules and I don't know where I'm where my schedule is or where I'm going on the first day and what time of course it's going to be different for every course because all your inductions are bespoke to your particular program that you're joining so those if somebody can't find their induction schedule or maybe they haven't had an induction schedule where should they be looking or con who should they be contacting If you contact ADH Advice, if we can just put that on there again, if they can contact ADH Advice, we've got a log of all the students that we've sent induction schedules to, and we've got details of what email address we've sent it to as well. So we'll be able to tell you the day and the email address we've sent it to, and we'll be able to send you one if you haven't received one already. Fabulous, thank you. And I think obviously everybody's gonna, you know, make an effort to, um, attend induction um, and, and as much of it as possible. But I know there's some concern of from certain students uh, if they're not able to attend every single part, is that going to affect them? Um, have we got any tips in terms of how people might be able to catch up or, or you know, somehow get in touch if they're not able for some reason to come to an induction day? Yeah, do you want to try answer that? Yeah. Yeah, so your induction days are for you. They are not part of assessment. We're not going to count them towards your registered attendance or anything like that. They are for you. So please do try to attend because they are there to make things easier and better for you. If there are times that you, for whatever reason, you're not going to be able to, hopefully there are fewer times than most of the week. If you are attending on the first day and you're meeting your program team, they'll be sharing contact details, their contact details with you. So you could always send them an email if something crops up. Where there are presentations such as program presentations, they'll be recorded for you to review online afterwards. So hopefully that will pick up on some of the things you've missed. Obviously activities and things aren't possible to record and they're not the same to watch anyway so hopefully you will be able to join in fantastic just working through lots and lots of comments <laughs> Bear with us people sorry we're just uh, as i say there's so many of you on this stream uh thank you so much for dropping comments and also it's nice to see that a lot of you are kind of making friends and connections uh just just from uh yeah meeting each other on here um let me see yeah i'm still seeing lots of very specific course induction schedule questions so i think for each individual course, refer to your course inductions for when different activities are happening. If you can't locate a copy of your course induction, then email advice at DMU so that we can point you in the right direction or send you another one. And, oh, there was another question that, oh yes, if you have particular program questions, 
that can't wait until Monday when you're meeting your teams, then equally contact ADH Advice and we can forward your inquiries to your program rather than trying to give you hundreds of different courses, email addresses during this. Um, I've spotted a question, maybe a bit specific, but I think maybe we, we could perhaps uh, answer it a bit more broadly. But obviously, so many of our arts and design courses, especially are studio based or, you know, have access to 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 those sort of spaces at DMU. Um, and uh, maybe it's kind of an, an, a nice idea just to kind of outline briefly um, in terms of, you know, not necessarily opening hours and stuff, but access to those studios. Because as you mentioned, Paul, earlier, the, the especially the Vijay Patel building is very much designed to, to kind of have this very open feeling um, where people can kind of, you know, experience lots of the different studios and workshops. Um, might be worth kind of mentioning a little bit about what that is like and, uh, and the access that people can have to studios. Yeah, sure. Just to um, add to you, what you were just saying about where people can access, um, just to, please don't run into people's studios because <laughs> some of the studios are quite dangerous. There's mm -hmm. sharp things, hot things, pointy things, um, and you know students using those particular studios will go through health and safety processes so that they can use them safely so just yeah the, although it's um looks very open there's still a wall of glass in front of it so equally don't run into the wall of glass either so there are many different workshops and studios in particularly the vj patel building where you'll see most of the arts and design programs Programs have sometimes more than one area that they'll access as part of their technical or practical elements of a program. Taught, uh, taught parts of the course will be timetabled into those workshops, into those studios. There will be other opportunities within a week for people to access if they want to continue doing things or experiment with something. It's difficult to say what that additional access looks like on any, you know, unless you pick a day in the year right now, because different modules are happening at different times, there'll be different deadlines. And obviously, if you are timetabled into a workshop, you take priority because it's part of your teaching. And so there wouldn't be other people accessing while you're timetabled. All of the areas have technical demonstrators, technicians. If you are wanting to know when something is free for you to access, if it's part of your course you're already studying, you'll be encouraged to access workshops as part of your taught sessions so that staff will be talking to you about when is a good time. If you're from other areas, always um, make that approach via the technical demonstrator so that you know you're not going to walk into a room in the middle of a taught session and suddenly end up as part of the presentation that's being recorded or anything like that. Does that help? Yes, really, really helpful. Thank you. Um, we've got uh, another question uh, that I think uh, Joe uh, has the answer to. Uh, <laughs> um, are we allowed to start our course if we're having issues with student finance? Yes. So yes, you are. Uh, follow your induction schedule. Uh, have a look at the IT guide once you've got finalised registration status to access our systems. Of course, please contact Student Finance England and chase Student Finance England for your uh, for any loan or finance issues. You will be asked, you may be asked to submit um, documentation. So please do that. You'll have been emailed 
from our finance department. But yes, fine for you to start the course, but obviously chase it, keep on top of it, please. Um, and obviously you won't get your student loan until it's gone through. Thank you, Joe. Hopefully there's not too many people having issues along those lines, but really, really handy to know that they can sort of get stuck in and continue uh, their studies. Um, okay, just having another quick look. We've got some time left. So Marie, just, just, oh, just sorry, Lara, Paul. Just Lara's question that's just appeared saying yeah. that they've got their schedule, but they're not sure what groups. I would say just go to the first session that's on that schedule and you'll probably be put into groups during that session. At least make contact with the staff and they will solve it for you. Okay, really helpful to know. Um, again, I think Joe uh, is uh, offering some advice to a question. I'm trying to find it from uh, Josh, uh, there we go. I completed pre-registration before the 13th September, but haven't been asked to confirm. Yeah, hi Josh, just thanks for that. I've just checked and um, we have, we should have sent you an email, a final registration email with an IT guide. So you're fully registered, so that's fine. You don't need to confirm. Fantastic, thank you so much uh, for spotting that, Joe. Really, really handy. Fabulous. Great stuff. Just making sure that we've, you know, that we've answered as many of your questions as we possibly can. Um, I know that our intro was quite comprehensive and hopefully that, you know, got lots. Um, can I? Yeah, for this one. Sorry, sports management in which, which school is that one in? Yeah, Anish, I did answer that earlier. You're in Humanities and Performing Arts, School of Humanities and Performing Arts. Fantastic. Got a... Let's have a quick look here. Ah, oh, okay. Um, I've got uh, a question here. I I can answer this, but please jump in. And if anybody, uh, if 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 I'm wrong or if you know any differently, um, but it's the uh, the sorry, the societies uh, are societies still running? Um, yes, um, our societies are still running. There's literally hundreds of them. Um, go to uh, De Montfort Students Union. They've got a website there all over social media as well, but there's uh, sports specific societies and obviously other interests, um, clubs and societies. Um, some of them, ha you know, might be running sort of more online than in person, but I think most of them are back in person now. So yeah, please get involved with those. Um, there's lots and lots that you can choose from. Um, we've had a question about uh, reading lists. Uh, uh, with me it was somewhere around here <laughs> uh oh no joe i'm sorry i know that you said oh here we go uh will we receive syllabus books with timetable emails yeah so um not all programs have got reading lists at this stage if your program has a reading list an equipment list a materials list a summer project you will have been sent that with your induction schedule. If you haven't got one with your induction schedule, don't worry, you don't have one at this stage. One may be shared with you during induction week, or it may be including your program handbook, which you'll also receive during induction week. Fab, okay. That's really useful to know. Um, Can I add to that? Yes, please. <laughs> so for everyone, um, if you're thinking I haven't seen a reading list, all programs will have potentially more than just a reading list. We tend to call them resource lists. So that might be books, periodicals, publications, videos, TV programs. And there it can all be accessed via one link where all the reading lists for each module of study is kept. And that's via Blackboard the virtual learning environment. So when you have access to Blackboard and you go into one of your module areas, you're looking for the resource tab. 
and there will be a section in there where we put all of our resource lists and the great thing about it is they are all, all each title is automatically linked with our library so if it's a title we have or a dvd we have in stock whatever that might be if you click on it it will auto link you to the library's stock for it fantastic again really helpful to know um what else we've got here now this might be where did i see this one <sighs> okay so we've spoken about the vj patel building uh it's a rather large building and we've got a question about whether there's any uh, maps or floor plans available. Um, I know that obviously when you're in the VJ Patel building itself, it's very well signposted. So I know there's signage everywhere and each floor, you know, when you're on the first floor, it kind of there's uh, boards near the um, staircases and, and the lifts, I believe, to kind of tell you what's on what floor. Um, but yeah, if there's anything else, any other tips or helpful information you can add, please do. Yeah, I'll start and Joyce, Diani, you might want to join in with this one. Yes, it is a very large building and it has a number of entrances. So some one day you might go in one day, one way, and the next time you think this wasn't what I saw last time. So just follow the signage and it is good signage. It's one of the benefits of being a new building. There is really good signage and there are lifts and stairs there are a number of lifts and everybody will be looking a bit lost for a couple of weeks so don't worry ask somebody and if you are in the vj patel building as you enter at one end of the building that's where the student advice center is yeah absolutely and i guess just leave yourself plenty of time you know in your first few weeks when you're just finding your way around um, you're bound to take a wrong turn or end up on the wrong floor and if you've got plenty of time you won't get so flustered so who do i keep interrupting <laughs> no okay sorry i thought i was I, I kept going to talk over at somebody um so Oh, I think I was just I was just going to emphasize that, you know, if students do, if they, you know, if you're unsure about where you're going, then please, again, just feel free to come up to us at the Student Advice Centre and just ask because we're more than happy to direct you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, everybody's really helpful and friendly. Paul, you've got your hand up. <laughs> Quite often, folks, because there are students starting to arrive on campus this week and a few times I've been helping people in the reception of this building. And actually, the, there's a little cluster of people slightly spread out looking lost and I thought, oh, I'll help them. And actually, they were all going to the same place. So sometimes asking the person who's looking equally lost next to you you might be able to get there even quicker together. Yeah, absolutely. And I know there's still a few um, questions about um, registration. So just to remind you, uh, we've got our registration uh, queries at dmu.ac.uk email address. If you have any questions or, or queries about that process or you need any help, please uh, drop us a line and we'll help you out. Um, yeah, thank you. Okay, so I know that there's been uh, a few questions um, about scholarships. Um, we're kind of running out of time, but what I'm going to do is we'll um, drop uh, a link to our, our web page uh, about uh, all our different scholarships here in the comments so you can have a look in your own time, have a browse and see whether you fit into uh, the criteria. Um, there we go, we've just done that now. So if you've got a question about scholarships, uh, head over to that page. Hopefully it will answer all your questions um, and there's contact details on there as well. Um, and we've got a separate web page for international uh, scholarships as well for you that we've shared. Um, Thank you all so, so much for your questions um, and, and for joining in. And just it's 
honestly such a joy to see so many of you, uh, you know, excited uh, to start within the faculty and just reading down the list of uh, courses that you're doing from contour, uh, fashion to architecture. Um, it, it's, yeah, I'm just really excited for you all. Um, we've got to wrap this up very shortly because our hour is almost up, but I'm just going to um, go around uh, and see if uh, our lovely panel have any sort of um, thoughts uh, that they want to share with us just to just to finish off. Um, Diani, I'll start with you because you're on the top left of my screen. There we go, I'm new to myself. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I mean, the main thing really, I've said it a couple of times now, but is that, you know, if you ever feel like you need any kind of support and you aren't sure where to go, then please, please, please do contact advice at dmu.ac.uk. Um, even if you're, you know, you're worried about talking about something, anything that you say will remain confidential. Um, you can even contact me directly, uh, if you um, or Paul, I'm sure that he would be happy to help as well. So yeah, please don't be afraid to reach out. That's lovely. Thank you. Um, over to Joyce. Hi. Um, yeah, I would just say that um, we have a group, a good set of um, people in the admin team that are also there to support you. And when you receive, when you are finalised at the university, um, you'll have a DMU email address. So if we need to get in contact with you, that's how we're going to get in contact with you. So it's important. You will get lots of um, emails going to your DMU account. But if you see something from the admin team, um, just know it, it will be something important to, to try, try and answer it if you can. But yeah, I'm sure you'll all have a lovely time on campus. We are all excited. This is a nice time of year because we get to be excited with you. So um, we look forward to seeing you all on campus in a couple of weeks. Next week, actually. Yeah, it's sooner. It's come around really fast, hasn't it? Um, and how about yourself, Joe? Thanks, Marie. I just echo what Joyce was saying. Look out for communications from us. So you look through your junk email, your spam email, just to see if your induction schedule is sitting there, if you haven't received it. Get in contact with us. As Diani said, adhadvice.com. That's it. If you haven't received an induction schedule, and you think you should have done. If you uh, think you sh if if by the end of Sunday, next Sunday, you haven't received a final registration email from us, wait until next Sunday, please, because we've obviously got a lot of students to go through. So between now and next Sunday, we are finalizing your registration. Look out for the email that you get with the IT guide so you see how you can access my DMU to get your timetable. And just have fun, take part in everything. Um, take part in everything in your induction week schedule um, and enjoy making friends and taking part in activities. Yeah, really, really lovely. Uh, and how about you, Paul, last but not least, obviously? Yeah, thank you. Just to build a little bit on something I said earlier, there are so many opportunities available to you while you are studying through your programs, through your schools, and a lot of them will come through your e DMU email. So all the more reason to keep looking at it and read everything that comes. And you get a lot, we know that, but read it because those opportunities are in there. And I think study is probably the most selfish gift we give ourselves in our whole lives three, four years of full-time study doing what we want to do and nothing else. And I think make the most of every minute of that, those opportunities. You've got the rest of your lives to worry about what your work's going to be. For now, focus on you and achieving everything that you want to be. Oh, Paul, that was, uh, honestly, I'm glad you went last and, you know, we didn't have to follow that up. Uh, I honestly just want to go back and be a student now. I feel like really 
pumped and excited for everyone. Um, if we haven't got to your questions within the live chat, don't worry, uh, we'll be looking at the uh, comments afterwards and we'll kind of reply to you on a one on one basis. So hopefully we'll, we'll get to any questions that we didn't within this live stream um, shortly after this. Um, but yeah, thank you again so much for joining us. And yeah, welcome. Uh, welcome to DMU. And uh, we can't wait to see you around campus. Thank you very much. And uh, see you soon. Bye. See you next week, everyone. Thank you. Bye.